How's it going? My name is Jason Reich. This is RPM Engineer Machine. I want to thank Practical Machinists for uh, giving us the opportunity to show you around our shop. So let's go take a look. For those of you that don't know us, uh, we are RPM Engine and Machine, located in Northern California. Uh, we started originally in 1972 by my grandfather. Uh, I moved to its current location in 1982 by my father. Um, we have 10,000 square feet, uh, half of which is a machine shop. We have three machinists, including myself, one shop manager, and two teardown and prep people that help with cleaning and getting ready for assembly. Um, we specialize in high performance race and street applications. Um, but let's go take a look at the shop. This is our TNS Blockmaster. Uh, we purchased this machine back in 2019. Um, and this is where we do all of our block work from the very beginning. So we put it in here, we can bore, deck, uh, sleeve, lifter bores, line boring. Uh, we can do all that, all of those operations in just this one machine. Um, whereas before this, we had uh, manual boring bar, manual surfacing, uh, very labor intensive. Um, so this machine was really our first experience in any sort of CNC control and really opened our eyes as to how efficient and much faster things can go um, with CNC control. Um, so we've been moving towards purchasing more CNC equipment and streamlining our process and getting things uh, just more efficient. Um, after things, after the blocks come out of this machine, um, they're ready to head over to the home which I'll show you now. This is our Rottler H85AX uh, CNC hone. Um, so once we're done boring the blocks, um, they're about seventh out away from final bore size. So they come over here to the hone. Um, this machine is CNC controlled, uses a diamond stone uh, coolant for the cutting fluid. Um, our old hone over there is the Sun and CV616. Great machine. Um, it's been the industry standard for a lot of years. Um, that machine though uses a vitrified stone and oil-based cutting fluid. Um, so as you're honing with that machine, it puts a lot of heat into the block. So you can imagine things expand and contract with heat. Um, so as you're honing with that, um, you have to make constant stops and let the block cool back down to normalize. Um, whereas this machine uses a coolant and a diamond. Um, so very, very little wear on the stones, um, no heat. We can hone 10 thou out of that block in a matter of minutes and you can touch the board it's cold to the touch immediately whereas that machine you touch it and it's warm it's got some heat into it um, things are changing um, in this machine we're looking for i mean as close to zero as possible but a tenth plus or minus on the top or from the top to the bottom is our uh, is our end goal um, that machine over there to hone a block from about seven thou away to final bore size is about four to four and a half hours. Um, whereas in this machine, once we get the process streamlined and we, we get the hang of this machine a little more, um, we could probably get the process down to about an hour or two. So this is our Sun NCV616. Um, we don't use it for the, uh, the cylinder hone part anymore, but it still has an align hone attachment. Um, the align hone attachment is for doing the main housing bore in a block. Um, which crankshaft sits in, so we torque the mains up, um, we put this in the main, uh, this is a mandrel, it has some stones in here, um, and we run it back and forth with this drill motor, and it hones the mains out. Um, again, we're looking for about a tenth across the main, um, if, not, if not less than that. So this machine has a Tormach 1100MX. Um, it's a great little machine. Um, it was our second CNC purchase. Um, we bought it because anytime we wanted to make something small or do a small job, we would have to tear down the big machine, take the fixture in out, and set up some vices. And it was just a lot of, it was very time consuming and more time than we wanted to spend. So we ended up purchasing this machine, uh, purchasing this machine, and the, uh, it's been, it's been great. The amount of work that we've done in it is far exceeded the, what we thought we were going to do in it. We thought it was just going to be for small bracket making and, maybe some job shop work and stuff like that. But the amount of stuff we've been able to do in this machine is, is, has been great. Like, as you can see right now, I have a 7.3 power stroke head in there right now that we had 
decked and it had firing hoops cut in here um, and they weren't quite at the spec that we needed them to be for depth anymore so we we're able to put in this machine um, and recut the hoops down a little bit deeper. This is our Sun and VGS 20. Um, it's our seat and guide machine. Um, so one bone cylinder heads. This is the machine that we put the cylinder head in, cut valve seats, um, cut valve pockets. We put new seats in, um, valve guides, and everything. So put the put the head in here, and all the machining gets done here for a cylinder head. This is our TNS balancer. This is the uh, this is where we balance our crankshafts. Um, so I put a crankshaft in here. We measure the weight of the rod, the bearing, the piston, the rings, everything that goes into the uh, reciprocating mass that bolts on the crankshaft. We simulate that, we get the, the weight of it all together. We match that weight to our bob weight here. Um, these go on all the journals of the crankshaft, spin it up, and it'll tell us a imbalance on here. Um, so it'll tell us our left side, our right side will go in and either we can either drill holes or add weight to a crankshaft to get it to match the balance of the reciprocating mass. Um, we typically like to take the crankshafts and we'll actually put them on our lathe if we have to turn them down. Turn the counterweights down to remove material rather than drill holes. This is our manual lathe. Um, we do everything in this machine from make small spacers and modified tools to, like I said previously, we'll put crankshafts in here, turn the counterweights down to uh, get our balance in right. Um, yeah, so this is Awesome machine, we use it on a daily basis, and we got two more machines to show you, so let's go. This is our sun and rod hone. Um, this machine hones the big end and small end of connecting your rods for us. Um, you can see here, we take a rod, pull the cap off um, if it needs to, put in our rod clipper over here, take a couple thou off of the rod cap, torque it back up, it'll be out of round. Put in the machine here with one of these mandrels and uh, rehones it back to round. Um, same thing with the pin side, obviously we don't clip it, but we either replace bushings um, or go oversize on them. This is our Winona Van Norman uh, surfacing machine. Uh, we've had this machine for a long time. This used to be what we surface blocks in before we got our big uh, CNC machine. Uh, now we just strictly use it for sonar heads. Some inline blocks, but mainly sonar heads. So as you can see here, we have it fixtured for just a parallel head like this one uh, with valve cover rails parallel to the deck. So the valve cover rail, surface the head, um, yeah, so it uses a couple different types of inserts, it uses CBN or a PCD depending on what material we're cutting. This is our press area. We do all kinds of work for different shops here. We do axle presses, bearing presses, hub presses, um, stuff like that here. Um, it's a 40 ton press. Pretty much anything you put in here, if you put it in here and put enough tonnage to it, you'll, you'll make anything move. So that's this area. I'll follow you back here. Follow me back here to our teardown room. This is our teardown room where we do engines come in. We do all the teardown here and prep work. And we have our axe parts washer here. Um, over here, we got our bee blaster, um, cleaning parts and bee blasting. Just get everything prepped and ready for engine assembly. Um, and as we walk back through here, we have our last uh, fabrication and welding area. We have a Bridgeport mill, a, a do all bandsaw, and just some welding equipment. and general fabrication stuff. Well, that was our shop tour. So thank you guys for following along. And uh, if you'd like to follow along closer with the day-to-day -day operations, you can follow us on Instagram at Jason underscore at underscore RPM, or you can find us at uh, RPM Engine also on Instagram. Uh, thanks again to Practical Machinists for giving us the opportunity to show you around our shop and hope you guys enjoyed it. And I uh, hope you guys can stop by one time and check it out in person. Thanks.